Let's take a look at creating a project from one of the Microsoft tutorials. I'm going to start off with the create a math quiz. So I'm going to select that one. And this one works with creating random numbers, works with a timer, works with making decisions, and it also works with making arithmetic operations or doing math. So scroll down a bit and step one. I'm going to right click and send this one to a new tab. Select that tab and it starts off with how to create a new project. And the project has the name Math Quiz. The next thing I want to do is that I want to select the form and make some changes to the property. In this case, I want to make sure that I have the form selected. So I can see I've got the pull tabs on here, so I know I've got this selected. And then I can change the properties over here. So I can change, let's see, the size of the form. And here I can make it whatever size I think works for me. Now, obviously that's not right, so I'll go back to the original. So it was the width of 500 and a height of 400. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Form border style, you can change that to fixed 3D. And the form maximize, set that to false. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a label onto the form. That will be this label here. So there's nothing in this label. First, I know it's a label because it says that it uh, was gener generated from Windows Forms label. Uh, I rename it to Time Label. So if I go to the top here, I change the name of this to Time Label. And <coughs> I get rid of any text that's in there. So it'll be blank. Uh, and by the way, I need to, to keep that from changing size. I want to uh, make the border style uh, fixed single. And turn the auto size to false. And then go down to the text property and make sure I backspace over anything that's there. Okay, so I do that for each one of the continuing steps. So I drag a label on, uh, change the name of it, uh, change what the text property says, and just continue on through these steps. And then I go to the next step, create a random addition problem. So I have my choice of which language to use. Select C sharp. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add a random randomizer. So I'm going to be able to create random numbers out of this. So go back to my form, and a quick way to get to the coding window is to double click, and here's the start button I'm going to double click on. Hover over that, double click, and that'll take me to the coding window, but um, in this particular case, what I want to do is that I want to go to a particular location, 
and spin that up. Scroll over here. And <coughs> for this one, public partial class form one colon form. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add, I can add some comments in there, but most importantly, the code that will create a random, a random object for me called randomizer. And now I'll be able to generate some random numbers. Next, I want to add some variables. So an integer variable type and a second integer variable type. So I'm going to add those right below that randomizer object. Now I should put these comments in there just to help me out later on. Uh, once I have that, then I want to add this entire method. So I would right, I would right click and copy this and go to my coding window. So I would scroll down until I found a blank spot in the right place. Make sure I did not place this um, inside of any other. I'm going to collapse this down. Make sure that when I pasted this in, I did not place this inside of any other method that was there, but still inside of this class. Still inside of this class. So, okay. So I pop my method in there. Okay. And the comments explain what each one of these pieces of code do. Okay. So, <coughs> so after completing that step, I uh, go to step three, add a countdown timer. And again, in my C-sharp code, where I left off at my randomizer, my variable names, I create another variable, which I'll use for the timer, which is going to be time left. It's an integer or whole number. Okay, so I'm going to want to add a timer onto my form. So go back to the design form, pull up my toolbox, and grab a timer. And let's see where the timer's at. Components. There we go. Timer. So I'd grab a timer, drag it out anywhere onto my form, and let go. And when I do, there will be a timer that will show up down there. Now I can select this, and when I do, I'm going to go back to Properties, and I can set my timer interval for 1,000. And that's 1,000 milliseconds, or one second. Okay. Go back to the instructions. Okay, so this is the code I would need to add in there. So when this timer ticks, it should run this code. So let me go back there. And so I'm going to double click on the timer. And when I do, when this timer ticks, I paste in this code and it shows you what it will do. Okay, and again the comments explain what 
each one of these pieces of code will do. Okay. For the next step, uh, add the check answer method. Copy that entire method and make sure that when I pasted it in here, I did not uh, paste it inside of any other method. So make sure it's outside of any other method that's, that's in here. After finishing that step, then I go on to add an add enter event handlers for the numeric up and down controls. Okay, so let's go do that. So on my form, when I add these, I'm going to select these little up and down arrows here and go over to properties. I'm going to tack down my properties again. And <coughs> these are up and down controls. I can use these to manage my number so when I click the up arrow it increases the number, down arrow it decreases the number. Okay, but what about when I press enter? Well, there's a little lightning bolt here. I'm going to click on that. There we go. And scroll up a bit. I notice that there's an event called enter. And what I'm going to do in there is put in there answer underscore enter. Okay. Okay, so I've got that. Takes me to the. I can get rid of that. <coughs> so, answer enter, which is what I typed in. So, when I press enter, this is what it does. So, I paste the code in there for that. And that's the code I need in there. Okay, so that's how I get to an event. And a subtraction problem. Okay. Nothing new on that. And same thing with multiplication and division. Okay. All right. And if you want, there are other features. And if not, then you're done. That'll do it.